Church of Christ, and uh, uh, but she she believes she believes in uh, she believes in, in the Lord moving, and uh, uh, we'd like to see her filled with the Holy Ghost also. And, uh, uh, but I, I know God's able. They think there's a possibility. She just she just don't have no strength, no energy, no. She just give out all the time, and uh, they're leaning towards uh, thinking it may be leukemia. So. Some tests. We're supposed to get the results back. I think the 16th of June. So I know God's able to work in this in this situation also. I mean, she she's she's a good sister-in-law. She she has helped our family uh, when mother was down and, and uh, oh well, she was there and she's just she's looked out after different ones and uh, she she's a good sister-in-law. Amen. Any any other needs, sister? She's a good lady. She's a good lady also. Amen. I know the Lord's able to, to work Amen. in yes, this sir. situation also. Yes. Hallelujah. Any, any other requests? I know there's un, unspoken requests, but up raising of your hand. We all we all got loved ones. Amen. That needs the Lord. Amen. Let's all stand. Amen. Take these needs to the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Lord, we love and appreciate you tonight. So thankful, Lord. So thankful, God, that we can approach the throne, Lord, of grace, Lord, tonight. On behalf of these, Lord, these individuals tonight, Lord, you see, uh, Lord, Richie Stanfield there, Lord, they're having this back surgery. We know, Lord, that you're able to help, Lord, God, give, give healing, Lord, there, Lord, to, to our friend, Lord, tonight, God. Help his, his family, Lord, in this time, Lord. God, we pray, Lord, that you would help Sister Sarah, Lord, tonight. We pray, Lord, for uh, Phyllis, Lord, our, our sister-in-law tonight, God, that you would uh, work in this, this need, Lord. Let your healing, 
Lord, that your healing virtue, Lord, touch, Lord, in these situations, Lord, tonight. Sister Felicia's uh, aunt, Aretha, Lord, God, I pray, Lord, that you be with her, Lord, in these uh, these times, Lord, God, I know that you're, you're a friend that's thicker closer to a brother, than a brother, Lord, and I know that you're able, Lord, God, just to reach down and help you, Lord, this week tonight, Lord, we pray for Harold tonight, Lord, Lord, that you help Harold, Lord, in this, in his need, Lord, tonight, Lord, we'll just give you the praise and the glory for it, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we ask and believe in you, Amen. Amen. Let it be done, Lord. We'll give you the glory for it. Let's sing that. Yours wonderful, wonderful Jesus is me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.
Amen. There is a direct, a direct line. Hallelujah. You know it's good as brothers and sisters that we pray together, pray for one another. Amen. But sometimes it's just got to be, amen, me and God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's direct. It's direct. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like for them saying that, amen, some more. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and while they're singing, I, I want us to focus our mind not so much on the, the, the singing or the song, but I want us to focus, amen, amen, in touching God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. In this service tonight, uh, you know, the old devil, he would like to bind, amen. He, he would like to try to hinder, amen, what God would like to do here tonight, amen. But I'm here to tell you, amen, let's, let's focus our, our mind direct on God tonight. And let's see what God has, amen, in store for us. If you need something from God tonight, amen, set aside those that are, that are, or put aside those that are beside you, those in front of you, those behind you, amen, and just let it be you and God. Amen. Here tonight. Hallelujah. For a few moments of time, I feel I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. Hallelujah. Same. Same. Hallelujah. Lord. You have a need.
he'll work it out. Praise God. Amen. Be honest with me. How many in here has, has tried to just fix the problem yourself? <laughs> Amen. I've been there. Amen. But you know what? Amen. When I when I turned it over to him, Amen. Give it to him. Amen. I, I, I remember one time I was going through a situation and uh, with my son. I may have said that, told this before, but I I, uh, I I was dealing, and I've got I got to the place I just didn't know I'd done everything I know to do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember. Amen. One one Sunday. Uh, I went down, we went down to the prayer room there at Arm Hill, down there in one of the classrooms. Yeah. And, and uh, I got on that direct line. Yeah. Amen. With with Jesus. Amen. I forgot about who else was in the prayer room praying. I didn't worry about what everybody else was saying. It was just me and him. And I said, Lord, I, I've gone my limits. And uh, I said, I need help. Amen. And you know what, Brother Don, when I got up from there, Amen. That, that that old load that I was carrying, amen, I wasn't carrying it no more. Amen. Because Jesus picked it up, amen, and began to carry it for me. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm thankful, amen, that God, amen, will work it all out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands. Hallelujah. Lord, help us tonight. Help us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come and say something, Brother Kevin. Hallelujah. says in verse 4 every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall he make shall be made straight and the rough places plain and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it and going down to Verse 12, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and melt and meted out heaven with a span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in balances who has directed the spirit of the Lord or being his counselor has taught him. So, we wonder how God's going to make that mountain come down. And how that valley's going to be exalted. He's the one that allowed it to be there in the first place. And we get in his will and let him do what he wants to do in our lives. And those things will happen. They've been promised to happen. But there's one more place over here in chapter 41 that I want to read. That when I read this, it really excited me. <clears throat> Let me find it here. I think it's in the next Thank page you, Lord. here. Thank you, Lord. you ready? Y'all y'all don't sit there and act like y'all don't understand what I'm talking about when I say this here. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, Come on. and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. Come on. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Yeah. I will open rivers in high places. Yeah. Rivers ain't supposed to be in high places. <laughs> How does he do that, man? And, and, mount, and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Now I felt Lord, the Lord was showing me this 
because yeah. what his intention for the church is is whenever he told that woman at the well if you ask of me water uh -huh. then I'll let that water spring up in you and you'll have rivers of living water. Does that water stop when you're on the mountain? Does that water stop when you're in the valley? That's how the rivers, the rivers of living water pouring out of your soul is what makes the mountain come down. And it's what makes that valley be elevated. And if you're willing to let God move, no matter what the situation is in your life, if you'll acknowledge Him and let His Spirit move and operate, It'll be level where you are. He will regulate it if you'll just trust in Him. Yes, yes. I had in my spirit, Lord, whenever I was praying earlier this evening, and I, I thought this, and I thought maybe it's not what God really wants me to do, but I feel like there's right here in front of the pulpit, right here, I feel like there's a fountain of healing right there. And I felt that whenever I was praying earlier this this evening and if there's anybody that really wants deliverance and really believes that that fountain of healing will touch them God will make that mountain come down and he'll make that valley come up and he'll work in you a work that you didn't realize could be done if you'll just believe him if you'll just trust in him now in faith right now I'm asking you if you walk up here into that fountain and let that flow come up to where you are no matter what the situation is God's got your healing in Jesus name
Thank you for obeying the Holy Ghost, Brother Kevin. I like to share. I know we all we, we we deal with these old ailments, these old bodies and stuff. I've had a spot that's been coming up on my lip for several years. Kind of if I get sick or something or fever, it's kind of like a little fever blister bust out. But I've had uh, two pretty bad spells with it this spring. And I don't know if it's sun. I, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's a bad. It's kind of a bad spot. It's really been hurting me the last two or three days. But Kevin began to minister there. We need healing. I said, Lord, I'm gonna step out. Hallelujah. Why? Because I need it. I don't know what. I don't know what it is. I, I told him why. I said, it don't get any better. I'm going to go have it checked out. Yeah, Amen. Amen. But I, I had it checked out tonight. Jesus. I'm going to open it up. There may be someone else that needs to testify. Amen. I want you to come and obey the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, I believe in God for deliverance. I've had a situation that's been going on for a few weeks now. And I keep feeling my phone vibrating in my pocket. Pull it out. I don't have no text. What's going on? I keep feeling, you know. And uh, the other day I was sitting around. And it was vibrating like I was getting a text, and my phone was sitting up on the dresser. I'm like, Lord, what's going on? And, you know. And I, I, I feel right here, and I couldn't feel nothing. And then I got to notice that Brother Don. Every time I held another heartbeat, I felt it. You know, and, and I'm thinking in my mind that all it could be is a, a blockage right there in that artery going down my leg. You know? and blood's trying to force its way past it, just making that vibrating feeling. You know? and I'm praising God for deliverance tonight. Hallelujah. I haven't had no energy. Hallelujah. I'm feeling something's wrong. You know, just ain't got no energy. I know I ain't a spring chicken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The energy level ain't what it used to be, but it was worse than it should be. But I thank God for it right now. I'm claiming it in Jesus' name. Somebody else.
sometimes, probably a few months ago, she was mm -hmm. suffering this. I, was, I turned to her and I told her, after we put her hand right here, and I could mm -hmm. feel something in the end, it was there. And it's still been there. It's, I think, gone down to something what it was. Mm -hmm. And but it's been a hurt a little bit. And I reckon because I've been thinking about it, and so the devil just wants me to put yeah. pain there. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I'm, it, it's not hurting like it was long ago. And I thank the Lord for it. So I'm thank you, Lord. Yes. Totally. The Lord has moved in so many times and so many ways. Yes. We, we want to name maybe what we want, but God moves. Um, and, and gives us what we need. No yes. Amen. 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 Come and sing, Brother Don, if you feel like it. Come and sing, Brother. Mm -hmm. If you feel like it. It's impossible to climb that Spotlight. Yes, sir. Yes, 
and I try now through the years, it's been 50 something years now, 54 or something. I tried uh, the best I could, brother, Guthrie, to, to live for God and do His will. And I guess I failed a lot of times, but I'll never forget that day or that night when He filled me with the Holy Ghost. Uh, I repented one weekend, was in a revival at Spring Creek for the Davis, and uh, I, lived, I lived in Nashville at the time. And we came down to the revival, and I went to the altar and repented. And I was really ready to repent. I left my pack of cigarettes in my glove compartment in my car. And that stayed there from then on until I got rid of them. I didn't look for them again. I knew where they were, but I didn't tell them about it. And, and I repented that, that day. I think it was on a Sunday morning. It was uh, at the Sunshine class, but I, I repented that day, and I went back to Nashville. And the next weekend, we came back down because the revival was still going on. I don't remember who was holding, but I went to the altar again, brother Ray, and got filled with the Holy Ghost. We was having they was having a sacrament service, Pete Washington. And I got through the, the second half part of it. And I got halfway through the feet washing. I got one foot washed. And I, I don't reckon I ever got the other one washed. But I got the Holy Ghost anyway. Yeah. You don't have to have both feet washed to get the Holy Ghost. You don't really have to have any of them. Either, either one of them washed to get the Holy Ghost. You don't have to do anything but repent of your sins. And that's got to come into your heart. Yeah. And so the thing necessary because uh, God don't require no great thing out of us. He don't, he don't require us to jump up and, and show off and, and run around and, and holler and hoot. All we got to do is to be humble before God. Just, just let him take over. And that's, that's what he did. I appreciate it. Thank you for that. Exactly who it was, but uh, I think it was a young girl there at the neighbor church. She praying for the Holy Ghost. Wife may remember who it was, but uh, she get she get so excited. I mean, seeking for the Holy Ghost, and, and uh, she'd shout or she'd run or she'd do something. And uh, Brother Haynes, in his wisdom, uh, one night he just grabbed grabbed a hold of her and held her. It wasn't long she started speaking in tongues. <laughs> Every time that she'd get close to the Holy Ghost, she'd, she'd shout it off or she'd run it off or you know what I'm saying, you know. And uh, and so, uh, uh, but she received the Holy Ghost. And uh, sometimes, you, you know, uh, and it's good. I'm not saying that that was wrong in doing that, but she just gets so excited that she, she was, uh, you know. But anyway, uh, it, it's not. It's I, I, I preach the message, uh, the, the simplicity Amen. Of receiving the Holy Ghost, it, 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 the bottom line is it's just a true heart repentance. That's all it is. It's just simple, a, a, a repentance and, and a, a meaningful. You know, I can say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm just speaking words, but if it comes from the heart, Lord, I'm 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 sorry. I'm really sorry. I want you to forgive me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what? He's faithful. He's, I, I never will forget. I, I'm going to tell you something. I wasn't a mean boy. I, as far as doing mean things, I, I, I wasn't. But I was still lost and undone. You know, I went out behind the gym with the other boys and, and you know, maybe told dirty jokes or whatever. But as far as doing things mean, I just wasn't mean. You know, I, I know I know of some people that was really mean that the Lord got a hold of. Yeah. Amen. And changed their heart and life. But I, I just, I was lost and undone. I, I was doing things that I shouldn't be doing. And uh, uh, I, I never will forget when I when I made my way to that altar, Brother Seymour. And I said, God, I've been tears beginning to flow. And, and uh, I said, Lord, I'm sorry. 
I want you to forgive me. And I never will forget the load, that weight. Sin, sin, sin is a weightful thing. It, it'll weight you down. It, it, it's a burden that you carry. Amen. It's a heavy load. Amen. But whenever we ask God for forgiveness, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, and and and, and is sincere about it. I'm gonna tell you something. He'll lift that old heavy load off of our shoulders. Hallelujah. Amen. And and the next step is being baptized. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. And then, and then the infilling of the whole infilling of His Spirit. Yeah. It's simple. It, it, it's really as simple. Amen. And, uh, uh, you know, when God fills you with the Holy Ghost, there, there is an initial evidence yes. that God has filled, that has filled you with His Spirit, and that's the speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Amen. Hallelujah. That's, that's, that's when you know you really receive, right. amen, God's Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. It's more than just to say so salvation. Uh, amen. It's more than just say I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my, my Lord and personal Savior. That's good, but there's more to it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's, just, it's, it's, a, it's simple. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's just simply obeying God's Word. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so thankful. Amen. To be in His presence. Anybody else want to testify? Amen. Miss Lynn, I know the Lord touched, touched you tonight. I know you give Him some praise. Thank Him. Thank Him for what He's doing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're glad she's here with us. Amen. And worshiping the Lord. Amen. I, I'm expecting the Lord to do great things in, in our heart and her life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Amen. Brother Vic, you want to say something for the Lord, brother?
Amen. Sister Abby, you want to sing? All right, come on. Amen. Let's worship with Sister Abby. She sings tonight. We're going to get out of the way and turn the service. We're going to see more of whatever he feels. Amen tonight. Thank you. Sister Felicia, I know you have you have sung, you, you got testimony you want to say. Yeah, I, I want to thank the Lord for his many blessings that he's done. Um, in about close to a year that God healed me of having migraine headaches. Um, Hallelujah. And he also healed me from a heat stroke that I had. I went and had a sale set up and came and I told Kevin when we were setting up, I said, something just don't feel right when we were taking everything down. We go to Iron Hill and I knew when I got in the building, it just, it was something, whatever wasn't right. right. And they let me go in there and lay down in the, I went outside and um, I'm not one to complain if anything hurts or you know, I'm not one to really complain about it. But I just mentioned Sister Nancy, I had a headache. <coughs> A really bad headache, and she knew that there was something up. Cause I never say anything that I got anything going on with me. Well, that when they went and let me go into the school to lay down, I could tell there was something wrong because I felt like I was just having se uh, like a seizure because I just it was just like everything was twitching, lights was flashed. Went home and it still was that way. Came to church that next morning and I came up and got prayer, and I've not had a migraine headache since. Didn't have no after effects of the, the thing. Well, we got done setting up yesterday, and the devil told me that his heart he said, if you don't part it, you'll have another one of those. I said, oh, no, devil, I ain't having another heat stroke. God's done healed me with them once, and he's going to keep his hand on me. And I thank, thank God for it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 I will give you a word of wisdom, though. Yeah. Make sure you... You got some shade, and you're drinking plenty of liquid. Amen. I, 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 Hallelujah. I'm, I'm not. Shade. I'm just. That's just wisdom. Amen. And we we learn. I've been out there. Yeah. I, I got hot <laughs> to the to the place that I, I got so sick. I was throwing up. Yeah. Amen. And I learned. You learn. You know, after a few things, that yeah. you got to take care of yourself. <laughs> Amen. God will take care of you if you take care of yourself. How about that? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're thankful.
Oh, see, oh, I forgot one. Brother, Brother Jeremy, Amen. whatever you feel, testify, feel like saying, whatever whatever you feel tonight. Thank God for a blessing today. Thank His hand of protection on us. Thank you. I was having a long time with you today. I'm going to get my radio from the fire department. I was coming back up Spring Creek and uh, got right there in front of the park. There's this van that's right there in front of uh, like where the boat ramp is. But there where those houses are, and there's a van coming this way. There's a little slight curve right there. And that van wasn't making that curve. And it was coming straight at me, straight at me. And I was, I was getting ready to brace for it. And the last second, it swerved over. Finally realized I was there. And that, that feeling that went through my whole body, like, yeah. You know that feeling that goes through, you're just like, yeah. I'm about to die. I was just sitting there, I was just like, thank you, Lord, for watching that for me one more time. Yeah. Just, just, just that quick. I mean, people having wrecks on that road like yeah. crazy here lately. And uh, I'm thanking for his hand of protection. I've had, I've had that song on my mind all, all day. This Holy Ghost is genuine. Oh, yeah. Every time I think of that song, you just, I, I can hear Sister, Sister Nancy singing it in my head. They used to sing that song together a long time ago when we was little kids. And I can hear her every time I think of that song. I can hear her singing that song out. And I love, I love, love my elders that, oh, yeah. that set a good example in my life. I appreciate y'all. I was thinking of that earlier. You know, we don't, we don't realize how important the children are. If you look throughout the entire Bible, every, every every story or every generation that was brought out of captivity or brought into the promise it was always seems like the children is the one that reaped the benefit of that promise that was, something happened in, in the elder generation that caused them to wander in the wilderness or different just different things until but but one of the elders made up their minds that, hey, we're going to go. Joshua made up his mind. Not Joshua, but Caleb finally made up his mind in the end. I'm ready to go in and take my mouth. But the children is the one who went in behind them and they helped them. And they got to reap those benefits. But when Jesus came, you know what he wanted? He wanted the, the children. The children. He didn't come to the religious leaders and the elders of the day. He came to their children and made them disciples. And taught them how he wanted them to do. And God uses that younger generation to fight, to do the fighting, because they know how they, they have the, the energy in them. Because the elders have that knowledge and ain't able to do that much, but that, that teamwork right. of, of that knowledge and that and that young ability to be able to do things, there's 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 a there's a separation, I guess, because of age difference sometimes. Yeah. But I was thinking about each example throughout the Bible. Seems like it was the children that, that got to go in and reap the benefits of it each time. And God want, God's going to use the children, but if they aren't trained properly, if they aren't raised properly, they're going to wander around until God either... They all die off, and God raises up another. Because it's, it's something. Even the story of David, he raised up a child. After all the Israel, the host of Israel was hiding in the rocks. God raised up a child. Each time, He raises up a child to show forth His power strong. And I want to be one of His children that shows forth His power strong in a day and age where people need to know that this Holy Ghost is genuine. It's not just a another form of something that is being preached in this world. This Holy Ghost is genuine. It's from the whole. His power cannot be that. As we was praying earlier, there is no power that can be formed against the Holy Ghost that's going to prosper. There's people that's going to try. There's going to be people that tries to water it down and it gets it after generation after generation it gets, gets weak because it ain't being used and I've seen it so many times, and I don't want to see it happen in this church no. after a generation that I've, I haven't seen some of the miracles that I want to see 
But I know that my grandfather and my mom and dad, they've seen some of these things. And it's time for us to bring in my brother and my sister-in-law and this younger ones to start seeing these things. So we have that testimony that we can prove. We can prove this Holy Ghost is Jesus. Yeah. And I'm thankful. Yeah. I'm thankful that this Holy Ghost is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it's not for
Amen. I appreciate these, Brother Ray. You you know we we pastored there at Regan, and uh, I, I don't want to say this to put a damper on the spirit, but uh, there are some that received the Holy Ghost while we was there. That's not going on today, and, and it, it 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 you know it tears at my heart. It hurts. It does. It really does. Because you, you want to see everybody be. But I, I was thinking, I was thinking of Sister Felicia and, uh, and and some of the some of the others that are still going on. Yeah. And, and I have to say thank you, Lord. I have to say I, I thank you for these that are, are staying uh, on, on track. Amen. Hallelujah. That they haven't got derailed. Amen. By the cares of this world. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm thankful for something that is genuine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's real. Amen. And you know, it, it's actually, uh, it's actually greater today than it was, amen, when I first received the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Because there is so much that you, uh, you, you learn, you, you just learn how to depend on the Lord. Amen. And your walk and, and, uh, uh, you got to realize there's times that you just, uh, you, you know, uh, you just you you walk by faith when it seems like that there's no one there with you. Amen. You just keep on walking. Amen. And keep your trust in Him. Amen. Before Brother Seymour comes, I've had somebody on my mind today. Oh, uh, I've had Ethan and, and Sister Monica and these boys. They they need they need to be in the house of God. And and I won't tell you something. The devil he'll give us every kind of excuse there is in the world. To keep us from being in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Ethan knows. Amen. He, he knows. And uh, Sister Monica, she needs to be here. She needs to be in the house of God. And these boys, they, they need to be being be taught. Amen. Raised. raised Amen. In, in in the ways of God. Amen. I, I want to, if it's stand, if you would. I, I just, I've had them on my heart today. And uh, I, I love Brother Ethan. He was always, he, he was just, he was so, he was my buddy. Amen. And uh, he's still my buddy. Amen. I, I know uh, I hadn't, I hadn't saw him. Amen. I hadn't, I hadn't texted him here lately. I, I, I need to, amen, let him know that I'm, I'm still thinking about him. But uh, I just want us to pray that that God will do a work in this this young couple's heart and life. Yes, Lord. You can do it, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, Let's agree, let's agree together. Lord, God, we bring this, this young couple, this young family, Lord, before you. Brother Ethan, Lord, that, that has once had the Holy Ghost, Lord, he, he, knows, he knows about your goodness, Lord. God, Sister Monica, Lord, God, I know that you were able to wrap your arms, Lord, around this family, Lord, these two young children, Lord, tonight, God. I pray, God, that you do a work, Lord. I know the enemy, Lord, would like to, Lord, put a hindrance, Lord. He would like to put, make excuses, Lord. God, we know tonight that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. God, and I know that you're greater than the devil, Lord, that would hinder, Lord, this young couple, Lord, from living, living for you, Lord. God, I pray tonight, Lord, that you reach down, Lord, into their hearts and lives wherever they're at tonight, Lord. God, and do a work. Deal, deal with their hearts. Deal with their mind, Lord. God, I pray, Lord, that you, Lord, that you would let there be a, a restlessness there, Lord. God, that they, they just, Lord, they just can't uh, seem to get rid of, Lord, until they, they come to know you, Lord. God, I, I, I place them, Lord, in your hands tonight, Lord. God, that, that you do a work. You do a work, Lord. God, we'll give you the 
praise and the glory for it, Lord. In the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, I'm expecting to see them in the house of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. such a great tree and hallelujah so it makes great shade and you can imagine in the country they lived in something that spread way out a mustard tree most of the time will wind up being about as wide as it is tall they don't grow but just a little over 20 foot tall but uh, they produce a lot of fruit birds and especially in, in the areas they live in when Jesus was talking about it was an arid country Lynn gets to see it too. Uh, and you can imagine what a little bit of shade would mean. Uh -huh. yeah. Hallelujah. Like Brother Guthrie said, you get a little bit too hot, you need to find your shade somewhere and cool down. 
sometimes eating a popsicle yeah. or you know, eat some ice cream or something like that. It's said, no, you don't know, but something like about it refreshes you. I mean, you just sit down and have something really cold. I mean, you don't do it until you get a brain freeze. <clears throat> but uh, I want to be dealing a little bit with tonight with the mustard faith. I probably won't keep you very long. Uh, but it's something to think on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to the book of Luke, chapter 17. Uh, say familiar verses of scriptures. Preachers say that all the time. And if you read your Bible regular, it is a familiar verse of Scripture. Yeah. Yeah. All of it should be. I remember, you know, the first time I took a notion to read the Bible through cover to cover. I've done it different times. <coughs> but I'm always studying in the Word. And I, it makes a difference. I tell people, you know, you want to study the Bible, read it through once first. Then start studying the Bible. And then the Holy Ghost, once you've got a knowledge base built up, the Holy Ghost can lead you and guide you back to other verses. You'll find yourself reading the Word and saying, I remember reading something else that goes along with this. Hallelujah. And that's how you study the Word of God. And God will put it together for you like a, like a puzzle, I call it. One big picture. But you know, a lot of times I've, I've seen these little pictures or these little, little lockets or little necklaces or something like that that are bracelet or a little thing that goes on a bracelet. You know, it's got a mustard seed. You know, sealed inside of it. And it's usually from mustard salad. You know, that's not what the Lord was talking about. It, mustard salad don't grow into no tree. Pretty good right. stuff. I like about any kind of greens. But it's not a mustard tree. And if some of you that's seen the tree, you got an idea what Jesus is talking about. Feast of the field and yeah. fowl of the air lies under it. Yeah. So in Luke chapter 17 and verse 5, And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Hallelujah. Lord, increase our faith. When you see God moving and God doing things, it increases our faith. Verse 6 says, And the Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the roots, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you, and you can be seated. <coughs> Hallelujah. I remember reading that. You know, being new in the Lord, it's a lot of size, but I'll try this, you know. Lord, tree be uprooted. You know, it didn't work for us. Hallelujah. You say, is the Bible not right? No, the Bible's right. When it comes down to it, hallelujah, God will move if there's a need. One thing I, I noticed in the Word of God, when you pray according to His will, according to His will, you know, you might pray you want a brand new Lamborghini, but that might not be what you wind up getting because you don't need it. Our kids ask us for a lot of things that they don't get. Hallelujah. Sometimes they get what they ask for. Hallelujah. As parents, we like to give our children good things. God likes to give us good things. You know, I remember one time Monica always wanted a hope chest. And uh, I was doing a job for this man, and he had, he used to make cedar chests. And he showed me some of the different stuff that he made when I was, you know, taking lunch break and I was looking at stuff. And he had this, he had this cedar chest there in the shop that he had, he had gotten uh, the little box inside of it out of square. And there was a few other things that needed to be fixed on it. And I happened to think of one. I asked him, I said, what do you pay for that? He said, well, you know, $140. I said, can you work it out with what I do? He said, yeah, I'd be glad to do that. So I was working for it, you know, and I asked Brother Cockrell, I wanted to, to be sure it was worth that, that much. And he said, son, if you can get a cedar chest for less than $300, you better grab it. It's all right. So I, I did the work for the guy, worked off the cedar chest, and made a little bit of extra money on top of that. And, and he asked me, he said, well, how are we doing? I said, well, we're about so much over the price of the cedar chest. He said, well, I think it's about time to quit. 
for some types of work I did, you know, so I get to work in the people's houses. You know, I might start out building a deck and I might finish off going with the washing machine before it's done. You know, so I fix a little bit of everything. And when they run out of money, they say it's time to quit. All right. So I, I had him help me throw that cedar chest in the back of my truck. And I come home and I park in the front yard by the porch and I went in the house and I said, Monica, can I get you to help me get something out of the truck? And she said, okay, and she got her shoes on, and we started out the door, and I walked out the front door, and she walked out on the porch, and, and I was listening. I was uh, expecting Peter to say something, and she seen what was in the truck when she walked out the door. I turned around, looked, and she was jumping up and down, you know, kind of clapping her hands quiet like. I was like, oh, did you think that was for you? <laughs> yeah, but parents enjoy giving their kids good things. Yeah. God wants to supply your need. I know a lot of times we feel like, yeah, I know God does this, and He's a good God, and He heals, and He does this, but you know, the devil will get you thinking, well, you know, I ain't really been up to par lately. You know, I don't really think God wants to do this for me. Do you get that attitude towards your children? Yeah. I mean, we need to understand God loves us, He cares about us. You know, but I'm going to ask you a question. What does a mustard seed lack that you have? Huh? Yeah, well, kind of, sort of. The ability to reason. A mustard seed is supposed to grow into a huge tree. There's no question about it. But he wind up like Peter stepping out of the boat. He had that faith and he jumped out and then his ability to reason kicked in. It's like, uh-oh. Yeah. Have I made a mistake? <coughs> Our reasoning sometimes cheats us out of it. If we had the faith as a little child, you tell a little child, this is the way it is, go do this, you know? My uncle told my sister one time, he was a bad practical joker. She came out of the back bedroom and there he was with a pillow set in the middle of the floor. And there was an egg on it. And he was crying. She said, Uncle Ray, what's wrong? He said, poor little egg. His mommy's gone. There's no hand to sit on it. And the baby's going to die unless somebody sits on it. He said, he said I'm, I'm too big. I can't sit on it. Would you sit on it and hatch the egg? <laughs> I'm too big too. No, you're, you're small enough, but I'm way too big. She said, okay, she sat on it. The egg busted. My mom wanted to kill him. She ran off crying. He killed the poor chicken. The kids will believe what you tell them. You know what I'm saying? If we had that childlike faith, God said, just ask me to see him. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Hallelujah. And I got to notice it when I read that. Seek and you shall find. Yes. Ask and you shall. Ask and you shall receive, it says. And then seek and you shall find. A-S. And then knock and it shall be opened to you. It's A-S-K again. He wants us to ask. That's right. You know, I was thinking as we were gathered up here praying tonight, and Kevin was feeling in the spirit, because there's a well of healing right there. And we're gathering around, and we're believing by faith. And I expect to hear a lot of good testimonies about God giving deliverance. But, you know, sometimes we feel like, well, does God do, you know, group healings? We're all gathered around. Is it any problem for God to know each and every individual need while you're gathered around a group? Come on, brother. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking in my mind, well, how come he didn't do it that way? In the Bible days, he was ministering to the people, and they came to him one by one. And he healed all that asked. All that came to him. And I got to thinking, he wants you to ask. That's the key. doesn't matter how many there is. doesn't matter how bad the situation is. God wants us to ask. Why? He said that he might be glorified. Hallelujah. Ask. 
Hallelujah. Have that childlike faith, that mustard seed faith. You know, uh, Paul raised that man, Eutychus, back to life. He got long winded. I'll try not to do that tonight. I don't know what Paul and I. But he's on the second floor and he got a uh, cool when he fell out the window, broke his neck. And everybody said, oh, the poor guy's dead, you know. Someone might even say, oh, Paul, he's so long-winded, it's his fault. But he went back out there, and they prayed for him. God brought him back to life. What did he do? He went back and finished preaching. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. But uh, I find it again, you know, in the Bible where it talks about they were like, stranded on the island of Malta, and he healed Publius' father, this you know, they were amazed. This man's going around. He's supposed to be a prisoner. They figure he's a bad man. You know? You see prisoners a lot of times around. You think, man, they're bad people. Oh, you'd be surprised what some of these people are in jail for. You could accidentally wind up being the same as jail. Hallelujah. But uh, they're not always bad people. Some of them just make dumb mistakes. But, uh, Paul gathered up this bundle of sticks, I'm sure it's nighttime, and he goes to throw it on the fire, and the serpent latches onto his hand, and his native villagers, they knew what it was, that that thing's deadly. I mean, he, he's a dead man. That's right. Instantly, he should have fell down dead, at least within 15 minutes, and, and Paul's still going, he just shook it off in the fire. They started having a different opinion of him. Hallelujah. He didn't escape death in the sea just to die by a serpent there. Hallelujah. God was with this man. And their faith was increased by seeing this. And uh, they said, well, you know, my father, he's got this discipline. Hallelujah. Bloody flux, they call it. You know, which is simply breathing out the bowels. Hallelujah. It's not good anytime you find blood in your stool. But uh, pray for him. And then the next thing you know, hey, you know, this guy needs healing. Hey, that guy needs healing. Hey, this guy needs healing. Faith grows. Yeah. That's what that mustard seed faith. Yeah. It grows. It doesn't just stay this little bitty thing. And you, when you got in church, the first time you asked God for something, and he did it. You know, there might have been something the devil said, oh, you don't want to testify about that. That's just something said. My niece is in Florida, you know. And her mom were gathered around a, a little fishbowl, and they they put some tadpoles in there with betta. Or they put one tadpole in there, and that betta ripped one of his legs off and ate it. Of course, they separated them, and now they're feeling bad, and they're praying for this tadpole. And you think, come on now, praying for a tadpole? You know, he got his leg ripped off. They felt sorry for him, and their dad comes up. You know, and he's an atheist. And he also he said, he said, what are you doing? He said, we're praying for this tadpole. The better just tore his leg off and ate it. He said, there's no need to pray for that. His legs tore off. It ain't growing back. The tail might grow back, but his leg ain't growing back. Frog's legs don't grow back. They're not like a lizard's tail. You know? He just laughed at him. And the next day, they're, they're standing around that little bowl rejoicing. He said, what's going on? He said, God gave him a leg. Are you going to testify about that in church? Is, is that one of the things you'd be standing up saying? Well, let me tell you what God did for my tadpole. Yeah. Yeah. Now the old devil will say, you better not tell that. Folks going to laugh. <laughs> but you know how amazing that is? You know what happened to that atheist? There's more to God than I thought. Uh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's able to do anything. Just ask. You know, the Syrian army was smitten with blindness and darkness. They came, 2 Kings chapter 6. They came, wanted to get Elijah and bring him back. You know, they, were, they were trying to trying to kill the king of Israel is what they were trying to do. And They'd find out where he was going to be, and they'd have an ambush set up, and Elijah would tell them, don't go to such and such place today. They've got an ambush set up for you. 
they can go there. So they did this two or three times, and every time the king knew they were there and went another way. And the king of Assyria, he's like, okay, we got a, we got a snitch here somehow. Yeah. Somebody is revealing information to the Israelites, so we can't get him. And one of his servants said, nay, Lord. He said, there's a, there's a prophet in Israel that can tell you what you're doing in your bedchamber at night. He said, he is telling the king what to do. And they found out who he was. You guys go get him. I want him. I don't know if he wanted to save him for his own use or whether he wanted to kill him. Or what the deal was, but they went and besieged this city, and there's Elijah and his prophet. I guess it was Elijah, wasn't it? Sometimes I get confused between Elijah and Elijah. I believe it was Elijah. Yeah. They're in that city, and his servant gets up, and he's like, Oh, Lord, look what's come against us, man. We're surrounded. He said, Calm down. I'm putting my own words. Calm down, kid. There's more with us than with them. Oh, see it. I said, Lord opened his eyes and he's like, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof, they're all over the mountainside surrounding the enemy. He said, we got this under control. And he prayed God in spite of the blindness. And he went out and asked him, said, who are you looking for? I said, we're looking for Elijah. I said, well, you're in the wrong place. He said, follow me. I don't know why in the world anybody that's blind would want to follow somebody. <laughs> They didn't know. Went to a city looking for somebody they're supposed to arrest. I got no idea. But a whole army blind all of a sudden. And they follow him into another city. And then finally when they got them all locked inside, surrounded by the army, Elijah right, said, Lord, open their eyes. And all of a sudden they can see again. It's like, ooh, uh oh We don't messed up now. Uh, and the king said, should we spite them? Huh? Should we kill every one of them? He said, no, oh, ain't going to do that. Feed them, give them some water, and send them on their way. Let them go back and tell that king how great the God is in Israel. Not just the prophet that can talk to God, find out what you're doing in your bedchamber, but how great this God is and how merciful He is. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. And all this came because someone had enough faith to ask. Hallelujah. Where's our faith tonight? How is it? Mark 16 and 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. You ever had anybody try to give you one of those cards? Sign this card, you know. I am a sinner. And I'm accepting you, Lord, my personal sinner. Come on. Belief is the first step. It's not a plan of salvation. You can believe all you want. It's not carrying you to heaven. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Well, baptism is necessary. Yeah. But it's not a plan of salvation in itself. Repentance is necessary. But it's not a plan of salvation in itself. It's only when you get to the book of Acts and the people ask them what they needed to do to be saved. And Peter said, obviously they believe. He said, now repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, not titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes. And then, as Brother Larry Black will say, get two thirds saved. Right. You got to be called, you got to be chosen, and you got to be faithful to the day you die. That's right. Because if God's going to tell you to enter in, thou good and faithful servant, you're going to have to have some faithfulness in your life to show that you've been faithful. John the Baptist says, bring forth meat, proof of your repentance. <coughs> you got to be faithful. You know, people think they're going to go to church, hit and miss, but they think they're going to be saved. Hallelujah. You know, my wife, I told Brother Guthrie this other day, talking on the phone, my wife really liked that testimony he gave about, you know, did I have financial problems and the Lord dealt with them by giving more? That does not make sense. In the natural, it does not make sense. We went through the same thing. We just had a financial problem that just kept on and kept on and kept on. And my wife says, you know what, I feel in the spirit. And I said, what? She said, we need to start giving more. It don't make sense, but I preach that. Come on. I said, well, I'm going to say no. So we started giving more, and I started paying above my tithes. My sister Nancy was talking about one time. And you know what? Not long, God starts matching that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir, brother. Hallelujah. Brother Moore has a little 
sign up the Baptist Church. If, if you, I don't remember how it's worded, if you don't want to pay all of your tithes, God's able to make your income match what you pay. Or something like that. God, God blesses. I'm telling you, I've seen it too many times. God will make me Yeah. Match what you give or however you word it is. But I'll leave. And he goes on to say in verse 17, Mark 16, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Hallelujah. When I first got to church, I went around one time with brother. And he knew where we were going. He said, we can go in here. We can knock on this door talk to this man here. He's a Church of Christ preacher. Okay, you know, I wasn't that skilled in the Word at the time. Yeah. We got in there talking about the Holy Ghost. And that, they, want to go that. they don't believe you can get the Holy Ghost nowadays. And so when Mark 16 and 16, and these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. He said, yeah, well, the Bible also says they shall take up serpents. Are you going to take up a serpent? Are you going to go pick up a rattlesnake? I said, uh, if you're scared of snakes, I wouldn't even go there. Because <laughs> I'll handle one for you. I used to catch them and tame them down and sell them. I've caught every poisonous snake, in it, or at least that was in Florida or Tennessee, other than a pygmy rattlesnake. I never caught one of them. Caught coral snakes, copperheads, cottonmouth. Diamondback rattlesnakes, timber rattlesnakes. I'm talking about caught them live and held them. You know, if you want to see somebody handle a snake, we can go there. He said, well, no, I'm not. if you're scared of snakes, I wouldn't go there. He said, he said, well, it does say if they drink any deadly thing. Are you going to go to the kitchen and get a bottle of bleach and drink it? So, well, one of my friend's boy did. Jumped up and got the bleach and started drinking it. I thought... You can't even get your kid to eat their green beans, Brother Gus. <laughs> now, why in the world would they take something like that, tip it up, and drink it? And you know what? It didn't hurt it. We just prayed. I testified about Kevin one time. We left some miracle grow on the table in the jug. Boom. <laughs> Looked like Kool Aid. You know, my wife come in there, and he's sitting in the middle of the table with that jug. Glug, 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 glug. <laughs> So I said, what did you do? He said, we prayed for him. He's still growing like a weed. Mustard <laughs> <laughs> uh, tree faith, huh? Uh, you, you got faith. You start putting God to the test and God answers the prayers. And your faith increases. Hallelujah. So then, in verse 19, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven. Hallelujah. And sat on the right hand of God. Poor God. How long is he going to sit there? You know? He's sitting on the right hand of God. Now Jesus said, All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. And when you sit on the right hand, that means you're sitting in the place of authority and power. He was. God himself manifested in the flesh. That's how we wound up with Jesus. And just because he entered a fleshly body doesn't make him any less of a God. He's still sitting in the place of all power and authority. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise God. And it says in verse 20, And they went forth preaching everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. These signs should be following us to believe. Yeah, but you don't understand. You know, I, mean, I, I ain't been a praying like I should. You know, I, I ain't been a, you know, doing this or that. And, uh, we'll start doing that. Are you going to let the devil whoop you with that? Hallelujah. It's not that hard to pray. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I've been really, that's been stuck in my head all these years. We were talking one time in the old storefront building, you know, about how if we're not careful, You'll be at work and God be dealing with you. And I need to spend more time with you, Lord. I need to get home. I need to read the Bible. And, and 
come in the house and they're sitting on the coffee tables that go out go like a big screen magazine. You got a subscription for it. Then if you're not careful, you'll sit down there and cool, get your glass of tea, and read that instead of the Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. You don't have to give in to that. The devil will tell you, yeah, the Bible will be there later. Well, so will this, and I'm giving my time to God. We've got to be faithful. The devil would like to put anything in your mind like that that he could throw in there and say, yeah, you ain't got no reason to pray. Hallelujah. You, you, you can't pray. God's not going to answer your prayer. Church, it's time we step out of the boat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sure the other disciples probably wondered once sometimes, you know, how come Peter's the only one who got to walk on the water? Well, I'll tell you why, because he's the only one who jumped out of the boat. Hallelujah. If they'd all said that, he'd have been them all come out of there, all of them might not have sunk. He might not have had to grab every one of them. Hallelujah. I feel like the Lord took Jesus when he got him up out of the water, and they, they kind of walked around the boat a time or two. Let him enjoy it. What did I say? Huh? <laughs> you never know sometimes. But if Peter, I feel like the Lord pulled him up out of the water and allowed him to walk on the water. Just enjoy the blessings of God. Luke chapter 17, verse 5. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Hallelujah. Lord, increase our faith. You know, that might be something simple. It might be something hard. I remember when I first got in church, I said, Lord, increase my faith. But Lord, please start me out with something little. You know, let's not start out with cancer or, or something like this. You know, and it was, it was little things, headaches. You know, but Lord, would you heal this headache? Boom, it's gone. You know, try to make it come back, you know. <laughs> it's gone. Or maybe you didn't have one to start with, the old devil would tell you. No, I the headache there. I wasn't afraid to ask God to heal it. You know? Right. And other things, you know, like I said about praying for a bale, a couple of bales of hay. God did it. The very next day. All coincidence. But you know what? After you go around a year or so and all these coincidences keep happening, your faith starts growing. And you start asking for bigger things. Like Sister Nancy, you know, well, what are you gonna do if something happens to one of your kids? You mean like he fell head first off the pier? Hit the ground, head first on his neck and shoulder, and you hear something go snap. And you go down there, and his arms hanging across his body like this, you know. They want to hang down straight. What are you going to do? Oh, we did. Is there a preacher around here somewhere? But yeah, Brother Adams is usually at the church there in Pensacola. We weren't far. So we went there. And the younger brother, Billy Adams, happened to be walking across the parking lot. And uh, so I might call and say, Brother Adams, sir, we need to we need to pray, brother. He said, this little fellow right here fell down and broke his collarbone. Yeah. We need you to pray with us for him. So I, right, you know, he come over there and he reached through the window, got his hand on Kevin's head, we started praying. Got done praying to Kevin said, Look. Hallelujah. What are you gonna do if this happens? Tell you what, we're gonna trust God. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'm not saying you're going to hell if you go to a doctor. You know, I I, I have a, a problem with that mentality because I've seen God do things. Yeah. yeah. You know, God made a situation happen for me where I wound up with a little over four thousand dollars cash, and somehow in that in that period while I had that money for it, I got carried away and blew it, brother Ken. Uh, I I got to looking at about hernia clinics. Work them up in Nashville, man. Twelve thousand dollars to get one hernia fixed. Man, I had two of them. I had an umbilical hernia and an inguinal hernia. I was walking around for months and couldn't even walk straight. You know, I have a walk bow leg, you know. And then I come across this place in Maryland, and they had a hernia clinic there that specialized in nothing else. Twenty-four hundred dollars to repair hernia. I thought, man, that's affordable. And two of them at the same time, there was a big discount. And like I said, something 
to him over at Mamaw's house one day and heard him. So James's uncle just died there in Pennsylvania, which is right close to it. And uh, so he was going to go to the funeral. He said, you can just ride with us if you want to do that. I said, well, okay. So we scheduled it. We went on vacation. We went changed the capital, different places, different things, you know, while we were there sightseeing and made a vacation out of it. Went and got cut on to come home. $4,100. I so said, that wasn't God. Well, I don't know. Sometimes you had to ask yourself that question. How did all these circumstances come together all at the same time? How did the cash suddenly be there? All of a sudden you find out about this place. Somebody's aunt died there in Pennsylvania. And you got a, a ride up there and back. You didn't have to worry about driving. I mean, God worked it all out. And I thank God for it. You know, I don't... I, I thank God, you know, that the man done a good job, fixed up everything in a good way, and, yes, but uh, I'm giving God the glory. Because right. yeah, just it. because you go to a doctor doesn't mean it's going to be right. That's it. I've seen all kinds of people. I mean, I've seen one guy had a an artery in his leg messed up and they needed to take a, what was it? what they did anyway but there was a leg was messed up and they needed to put a, a replace the artery in his leg with artificial tubing or something like that and when he went in for surgery they did body x-rays on him beforehand and uh, when he went in for surgery they done the wrong leg and on top of that there was a mass on his lungs and they, well we got him under so we just go ahead and take one of the ribs out and Cut that cancer out while we're at it. It turned out it was scar tissue from having pneumonia the year before. So just because you go to a doctor doesn't mean it's going to be right. Okay? But I thank God. He can direct hands. That's right. That's right. He can direct hands. Hallelujah. I've told different ones, you know, you go to the doctor sometime, you're at their mercy. You don't know whether they're good. They're, they're really trying to help people or whether they're just trying to make money. Yeah. I've seen doctors suggest things to people and, and something really expensive and really hard. And, and, uh, so one thing, you, you really want to know whether the doctor's out in it for the money or really cares about you? Say, no, I don't want to do that. And if they get mad, they just want money. Enough of that. So if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, hallelujah, you can say to this sick mind who be thou plucked up and cast into the sea. Hallelujah. One of the biggest hindrances to the purpose of the church is this frame of mind where we, we feel like God won't do it for me. God will do it. Hallelujah. Now, this story is where Jesus was in his hometown. And the Bible said he couldn't do many mighty miracles. Now, he's God. He can do what he wants regardless of, of what's going on. And it's not. He couldn't. He wouldn't. He is not going to act when there's no faith there. On, We've got to have faith if we want to see God move. So in Mark chapter 6 and verse 3, their attitude, this frame of mind, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simeon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. What's this brother Kevin coming up here? I feel like there's a well there, you know. I watched him grow up, man. I heard him tell the story about catching the whale. Oh, that was really kind of tricked him one time. We fished him. His line went underneath the boat and out the other side. Brother Rhodes grabbed the hole of that spring. Old Kevin was fighting that big boy. Brother Rhodes told him he finally let loose. And he said, man, you must have had a whale. He said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling everybody about the whale he had, but he got off. Uh, the whale was Brother Larry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know stuff like that about it, you know. <laughs> you 
up there and act like God chose me. You can teach yourself how to prepare for it if you want to. Come on, brother. Come on. This is Brother Ray. You know what I see Brother Ray do one time? He got out of the car and he went over to this highway. And he started running across the highway. Two lanes going two different directions. And he starts to run across that highway. And he gets across one lane and his knee gives out on him. And he falls. And he got no choice. In fact, I could have fell flat out my face and got run over but I knew I couldn't stop or I'd get run over. So I went into a roll and just used my forward momentum and kept rolling across the road. And when I got to the curb, I just kind of hit, bounced up into the flower bed with all the cactuses. <laughs> and Jacob said he waited till he saw me getting up before he started laughing, but I don't believe it. <laughs> I'd like to see some of the expressions on them people's faces when they see that old coon across the road. <laughs> Come on, now you expect me to believe that God's going to use that? That's just what God uses. Don't let that devil tell you you're nothing. You are. Yeah. But you're still a child of God. Thank you. Hallelujah. And he will use you if you will make yourself available. I'm talking about mustard tree faith. Hallelujah. But Jesus said unto them, the prophet is not without honor but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. There was a few of them that had a little bit of faith. Praise God. Kurt, what I'm saying tonight is we need to increase our faith. Start asking God for things. If it's just little things. And when God does it, even if it's your tadpole, stand up and give God the glory for it. Amen. And as you give God the glory for these things and you're thankful for these things, God will start doing more for you because you're magnifying yeah. Him. Yes, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's the kind of person that God's going to do something great with, especially if you've got the attitude it's all Him. It's not me. Praise right. God. Stand with me. Lord. Thank you. Increase our faith. Hallelujah. We've got to have faith like that mustard seed, and it'll grow into something great. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's continue to remember those we've been praying for and expect God to do something. Thank you. we got a box here with a bunch of names in it. Hallelujah. And I'm expecting God to move in those lives. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. So let's pray. We'll be dismissed in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your